The year is 1922. Henry Leland and son Wilfred are in dire straits with the Lincoln Motor Car Company. It was the second luxury car brand Leland made. The first was Cadillac. Cadillac was built, or I should say reorganized, on the ashes of the original Henry Ford Motor Car Company. After a dispute between Henry Ford and his investors, he left the company in 1902, Henry Leland was called in to appraise the Henry Ford Company for liquidation. But Henry Leland would convince the investors to stay and build a new car. Cadillac was founded August 22, 1902, named after French explorer Cadillac, who founded Detroit in 1701. GM would purchase Cadillac in 1909. Leland would stay at Cadillac under General Motors until he and William Durant had a falling out about government contracts to build the Liberty Aircraft Engines. It's important to note that Durant would eventually give in to the government contracts and both Cadillac and Buick would build Liberty Aircraft Engines. So Henry Leland would leave General Motors to start a new company so he could build those Liberty V12 engines and get money from the government. It's important to note Leland is no spring chicken at this point in time. My guy is 74 years old and he sort of looks like the Colonel. I mean, look at this picture of the two. He has a striking resemblance to Colonel Sanders. So Lincoln Motor Company was born in 1917 and was awarded $10 million contract to build the Liberty V12 engine. The Liberty engine was a modular design, could be multiple engine displacements, inline four, inline six, V8, and V12. Single overhead cam on each bank of cylinders, two valve per cylinder. The V12, the banks of cylinders were in a 45 degree angle, 1,649 cubic inch displacement, 27 liters. It was good for making 400 horsepower. It was found in aerial tanks and marine applications. The War Department placed an order for 22,500 engines. The contract was divided between Ford, Lincoln, Marmon, Packard. Eventually, Cadillac and Buick would also join in making these engines. Lincoln would build 6,500 engines. After the war, Lincoln would regroup. The Lincoln plant would get retold to build luxury cars. The Lincoln built bodies were designed by Angus Woodbridge, who was Leland's son-in-law. He was trained as a ladies hat maker. They also worked with coach builders Brunn and Judkins. Lincoln also sold the chassis, which could be taken to any coach builder of your choice. The Lincoln body cars were very old hat at this point in time. Lincoln motor cars struggled after the war, trying to transition between building war engines to making luxury cars. Some customers had to wait over a year to get their car. By 1922, Lincoln was on the verge of bankruptcy and was placed in receivership. Edsel Ford, son of Henry Ford, saw Lincoln was for sale at a receivership sale. Henry Ford bid $5 million, which the judge refused because the company was valued at $16 million. Ford would win the bid at $8 million to buy Lincoln Motor Car from Leland. And remember, Leland took Henry Ford's first company. This was almost like payback. This was like a personal victory for Henry Ford. Henry Leland and his son built Lincoln from the ground up. So in a way, it was almost like Henry Ford coming full circle. Henry Ford bought Lincoln on February 4th of 1922. Lincoln and Ford would remain independent from one another until 1940. Henry Leland and son would stay at Lincoln until a dispute, which would cause both of them to leave. 1922, Lincoln model lineup. Lincoln was only offered in one model, the Model L, but it could be had in a number of different body styles, either built by Lincoln, Judkins, Brunn, or a coach builder of your choice. Let's talk specs, 200.75 inches long, 68 inches wide, 80 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 136 inches. Price, 
$3,030, which is equivalent to you spending $60,253.68 in year 2024. Total, 1922 Lincoln production was 5,512 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 357.8 cubic inch displacement, flathead V8, 5.9 liters. It's good for 90 horsepower, 2,800 RPM, an estimated 170 pound feet or 231 newton meters at around 1,200 RPM. Once again, that's an estimate. Bore of 3.4 inches and a stroke of 5 inches. Compression is 4.8 to 1. This engine features blade and fork connecting rods, meaning the engine, if you, when looking at the engine, the banks of cylinders match perfectly because it uses this type of connecting rod design. Most engines from this period are a bit offset. Three main bearings. If you're in the market for a 1922 Lincoln Model L, I know a place that has one for sale. Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania. They have a thousand cars for sale when recording this episode. And get this, anybody can go peruse their inventory, whether that be online or in person for hours of operation information and pictures pertaining to this very car. Be sure to click the link below after the show. Let's talk styling start with these headlight bezels just look at all of the different textures inside of the bezels also notice the textures inside the headlights themselves coming down to take a look at the bumper situation just look at how that bumper is designed. Also notice how it connects to the car. Grill. There is a bar between the two headlights as well as the headlights are also mounted to the fenders. Just look at how these fenders are designed. It comes up right there. Nice Lincoln badge and moto meter. These are some big wheels. Look at how these fenders are designed with this bead up on top look at how it just flows down into the running board the running board is pretty wide here's my foot for reference I wear size 12 shoe and it does overhang a little bit back here that's weird there's more space back here than there is up front it's usually the opposite also check out how this body is positioned on the chassis notice this part here kind of protrudes the body more and then it meets up with it right back here this is the widest part of the body right here but the uh, fenders extend past it this car has a cowl vent as well as cowl lights Look at all the pinstriping. I love this line here. This is a split windshield. There is a sun visor, external sun visor. Notice the fenders kick out back here. You can also see the leaf springs as well as brake light, spare tires, rear bumper which mimics the front bumper. It's a 
big flat piece of glass back here. But let's look at this door panel. Notice it does not have an armrest window crank for the big window and it operates like this. This is the door handle to get out, door handle to pull the door shut. Just take a look at this interior. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, clutch, brake, gas pedal, starter, place to put your foot. There is the gear shift lever and hand brake. There are steering wheel controls as well. There's retard and advance for throttle and spark adjustment for driving range. So just want to show you this down here. A lot of people complain about dog legs on 50s cars, but I think it's harder to get in a 30s car. Look at how much space you have in between the wall here and the seat. There isn't that much space. Here's my foot. For reference, it's just big enough to get my foot in there. Here is what over the hood looks like. Then over the hood looks like. On to the button switches and knobs, headlights, key, ignition, amp meter, oil pressure, speedometer, odometer, tripometer, clock. Notice Waltham instruments instead of say like Stuart Warner. Up above, there are no sun visors. It has an external sun visor outside. This is to operate the windshield wiper. There is a relatively large rear view mirror. Here you got the stick shift, gear lever. This is a lighter that pulls out of the dash. So the back door is just like the front door, suicide style. Notice it doesn't have an armrest on the door panel itself either. Door handle to get out, window crank for the big window, door handle to pull the door shut. This car has jump seats which pull up out of the floor like this. And that's what it would look like in the upright position. Notice the floor is channeled out where the seat would go. There is a robe rail on the back of the front seat to hang a heavy blanket in the winter time so the back seat passengers don't get cold. So let's talk creature comforts. Look at how much space there is back here. But the armrests, there are right there on the side. Ashtray, as well as dome light. There are also other reading lights in the back, in the corners back there. There is a privacy shade for all five windows in the back, including the rear window. There's a privacy shade above that window, this window here, and this window. There's also a curtain above my head. There are flower vases, or there's just one flower vase, and there appears to be another holder of sorts right there. Notice the windows in the way back also go down. There is also a footrest right here coming to the under the hood section the hood gets latched down with those which they're in the unlatched position man just look at that v8 distributor right there in the front. Notice all of the wires get tucked in that tube to make it nice and tidy appearance. This big canister on the firewall, that's a vacuum operated fuel pump. Look at the steering rack. 
goes underneath it. Look at how thick that belt is. I just want to direct your attention to all the pinstriping on the louvers. It's a nice touch. So just look at that beautiful engine. On the positive side, lots of space in the rear compartment. All windows except for back glass open, privacy curtains all around. This is Genesis to Lincoln as a brand. 1922 was the last year for the Leland Model L against it. It's a bit tricky getting in and out of the front compartment because of the way the seat is placed next to the body there isn't that much space parts information people who know these cars are getting really hard to find all right now it's time for would you rather two scenarios today in the first scenario would you rather have a 1922 cadillac series 61 or 1922 lincoln model l or 1922 Packard single six. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, 1922 Franklin series 10 a or 1922 Lincoln model L or 1922 Pierce arrow model 33. Once again, going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you like this channel and want to see more and you totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Thank you all so much. Again, I really appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. Until next time. Tip.